Good evening. Oh, you can hear me okay? Uh, welcome to the uh, June 3rd meeting of the Lowndes County Democratic Party. Thank you everyone for coming. Um, if you would uh, join me in standing and recognizing a moment of silence uh, for those young men and women, old men and women, uh, around the nation who serve us here and abroad. Um, they do a really great job. We don't think about them often enough. They put themselves in harm's way. Um, some of them get killed. And the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you very much. When you came in, you should have gotten a bunch of slips of paper. There's a sign-in sheet there at the door. Please sign in. Make sure that we have your contact information. Um, there was an agenda. There were minutes from the May meeting. Uh, there's a membership form. If you haven't paid your membership uh, dues yet, please do. Um, if you have a question about have I paid my membership dues yet, um, you can contact Jarrell, our secretary. He currently has the membership information. Um, and there's a form for the barbecue to buy barbecue tickets. Our barbecue will be Tuesday, July the 2nd, so that's just a month from now. So uh, you can get your tickets, sign up and get your tickets there. So the meeting minutes from May, has everyone had an opportunity to read those? Are there any corrections? Uh, hearing no corrections, I will um, take approval by acclamation. Thank you. Uh, Jim Parker, do you have a financial report for us? Uh, I think this is the number. Oh, really? Yeah. Because the check was taken. So. Uh, yeah, this was a start, and this is the end. Okay? Really? Yes. I know, because there was a check in the drawer. Oh, I didn't see. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, we uh, started the month with uh, $396.69, and we ended the month with $342.34. Uh, coffers are getting thin. So we're going to need a little help here. Uh, I was thankful to see because I hadn't noticed it before. We do have enough money for the rent <laughs> this month. But we still got uh, to, to do the Internet. And then there's next month. And hopefully come July and the barbecue will be a lot better shape. This month we made um, $740 worth of deposits. Um, we paid $500 rent on the barbecue hall, um, to $300 in rent, and $800 on, uh, uh, $100 on the Mediacom. So um, we took in just about as much as we needed to have go out, and the barbecue will get us over the hump then. So come to the barbecue. It's going to be really great. Uh, we have with us... Um, one elected official, and that's Ms. Fanny Jackson. She's the new chairman of the Brooks County Democratic Party. So, Fanny, could you stand up there and wave your hand so people could see you? <laughs> Mr. Marshall, the longtime Democratic Party leader, uh, stepped down in April, and Fanny was elected last month. We have... Um, each month, opportunity to hear from people from around the community who serve us in some fashion, either as a volunteer or a paid employee, or um, if you've been here, you, you know we've heard a variety of people. 
So um, this month we are lucky to have two speakers with us and both are going to talk sort of about environmental issues. First we're going to hear from Aaron Strickland, who's the executive director of KLVB. Keep Lawns Valdosta Beautiful is, um, well, he can explain it better to you than I ever can. So come on, Aaron, and tell us all about KLVB. for a nonprofit, I need it. So, <laughs> Thank you all very much for having me again. My name is Aaron Strickland. I'm the uh, executive director of Keep Lounge Valdosta Beautiful. Uh, what Keep Lounge Valdosta Beautiful is, is we are a local nonprofit environmental uh, organization. We're an affiliate of Keep Georgia Beautiful and Keep America Beautiful. So you can kind of see the little pyramid of hierarchy there, I guess you could say. Uh, Georgia is the... Uh, the state that has the most number of regional affiliates in it, which is about 75, of which we are one of those. Each one of those affiliates operates differently. Uh, for example, uh, some are departments of local government, some are standalone. Uh, we happen to be a standalone. I am not an employee of uh, the city or the county. If I was, I'd have retirement, but we won't talk about that. But <laughs> anyway. Um, the, uh, the way we are funded and the way we are set up is, again, we're separate. I'm, a, I'm hired and fired by the organization itself. Uh, Keep Lounge Salt Austin Beautiful is made up of a board of 12 volunteers. Four are appointed by the city, four by the county, and then four by the board itself. Um, I am the, the only staff, full-time staff person. Uh, occasionally we're blessed with the uh, occasional intern from VSU uh, but for the most part it's a, a staff person of, of one and a board of 12 volunteers and ironically enough we get our money from uh, trash in a roundabout sort of way Keep Lounge Salt Austin Beautiful is not operated off of taxpayer dollars our money uh, which we operate off of a $50,000 a year budget. That pays for me and everything that we do throughout the year. A lot of things that we do are uh, dependent upon grant money, uh, extra money I'm able to bring in. For example, around uh, America Recycles Day, which is November 15th of every year, we have a recycling magician that goes around and does an interactive magic show at a lot of the area uh, elementary schools. He does about 12 to 14 of those. And that's, you know, fairly expensive. It costs us over $5,000. We're able to go out and get a grant to help pay for that. I applied to Walmart for a, uh, a grant to help me pay for office supplies. So I guess you could say we've perfected the art of doing more with less, I guess you could say. Um, that $50,000 a year, the way uh, that comes to us is that comes from the host fee from the landfill. As you know, uh, as most of you probably know, the landfill is privately owned. That's owned by Advanced Disposal. It resides in Lowndes County. For every ton of debris that's dumped out there by a trash company, uh, that trash company pays a certain, num certain number of dollars per ton to dump out there. Say, hypothetically, it's $35. One dollar of that fee per ton goes back to the host county. That goes into a separate account other than the county's general fund. Uh, they're tax account and of, um, of all the money that that fee so it's a dollar per ton of every ton that's dumped out in the landfill annually of that we get fifty thousand dollars and again that pays for me and everything that we do so it's kind of ironic that we an environmental organization gets funding from trash but due to house bill 489 i believe it was from back in 1999 whenever that was established Whenever the uh, organization was first founded, uh, it was jointly founded by the city and county. Uh, each of those were contributing $25,000 due to House Bill 489, which had to do to duplication of services by local governments. Uh, they came up with this way to, uh, to pay for the organization. And July 14th will make 13 years that I've been with the group. And we have a, uh, a mission statement it's simply to promote environmental stewardship and beautification by empowering individuals through public education. So 
how do you do that? How do you empower people and how do you educate them? Well, I'm kind of of the uh, belief that you educate best by getting people out, getting their hands dirty, showing them what the problems are, and doing it that way. It always worked best for me. So we, me along with the, our board, developed a annual program of work that has to do with a center is centered around several annual events that we have, uh, cleanup and recycling events, and uh, other programs. Uh, some of those um, include our bring one for the chipper event. That's our Christmas tree recycling event. Okay. I'm a little taller than you. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, again, uh, talking about our events that we have throughout the year, uh, we start off January of each year. Generally, the uh, first Saturday of each January was, is our uh, Bring One for the Chipper event. And that's our Christmas tree recycling event. Uh, whenever, if you go out and you buy a, a new, a, a real Christmas tree around Christmas time, odds are you'll get a flyer that has that'll tell you all about that. Um, so we uh, collect all these. Uh, Christmas trees that folks bring in, and we chip those up, let folks take the mulch if they like it, and uh, whenever they bring a tree in, they can take a, a new seedling home with them and plant it, so it kind of gives them the, uh, the feeling of uh, taking something home and planting what was chopped down in the environment to, for their holiday pleasure. Um, other event, uh, events include our electronics recycling events. We have one of those in the spring, one in the fall. This past spring, a couple months ago, actually, uh, we collected a little over eight tons, 16,125 pounds of electronics that would have been destined for a landfill, but uh, we were able to divert that, and now those electronics are going to be uh, recycled and you know turned into other products. And we uh, recently had our Arbor Day event. Uh, we partnered with the uh, the City of Valdosta and the Tree Commission on that, and. Our Great American Cleanup event, which is a, an event that's centered around beautification and neighborhood cleanup. We just had that in April. Uh, that event, we had nearly 200 volunteers come out, and we collected a little over three tons of uh, trash litter and debris that was out in uh, places that it didn't belong. During the uh, summer months, we have a uh, volunteer appreciation luncheon. Uh, we conduct a litter index, which is a visual litter survey. Uh, we spend a day in the city and a city of Valdosta and a day out in the county. Uh, the county day uh, encompasses uh, Lake Park, Hay Harbor, and the unincorporated areas. And what we do is we go and we grade, you know, predetermined sections on these maps uh, on a scale of one to four as to how littered they are. And that helps us focus our, uh, our efforts um, with our different programs, such as the Adopt a Road and Adopt a Street programs that I oversee. We call it Adopt a Road in the uh, county, Adopt a Street in the city. And that program has about 65 participants uh, in city and county. And that is open to any school, club, organization, business can adopt a section of a city street or a county road and go out at their leisure and uh, conduct a cleanup. They don't have to wait for one of our annual events to come up. Um, rolling into the fall, we have our Make a Difference Day event at the end of October and uh, Rivers Alive at the beginning of October. Uh, just to share some of those numbers with you. At, I'm just going to give you some cumulative numbers. Uh, on July 14th of 2000, I started with the organization. I kind of started a tally of what we do, numbers we uh, generate from our events, because what, are, what better way to judge how the organization is doing but than by the number of volunteers that we're getting out, the number of presentations that we make, the number of tons that we collect, and um, things like that. So. In the uh, 13 years that I've been with the organization, we've had well over 10,600 major event volunteers come out. We've collected 2,044,600 pounds of trash, litter, and debris. That's all out in places that it didn't belong in, whether it be riverbeds, creeks, trails, city streets, uh, the backyard of uh, an elderly person's yard, 
um, we were able to pick up all that stuff. That equals out to about 1,022.3 tons. Uh, we've collected over 2,600 tires, over 260 appliances, and we've recycled over 13,800 Christmas trees. All of that is done not with taxpayer money. That is done with a staff person of one, a board of 12 volunteers, and community volunteers. That's not taxpayer money. That's not county or city staff going out and doing that. So with that taken into consideration, over 2 million pounds of junk is pretty impressive for that to be, to be picked up over the, uh, the last dozen years or so. Um, let's see here. I'll tell you a, a little bit of a story. Back when I started uh, with Keep Lounge Philosophy Beautiful, it's funny how life works out. You know, it never works out quite how you planned. My wife and I had the, uh, the, uh, the pleasure uh, to be able to move a couple years ago from our first house that we had bought together. You know, we had the, uh, the plan of being in that house for five years, and then we would, uh, you know, move up into a, uh, a, move up out of our little cookie cutter neighborhood and get a bigger house one day. That was the five year plan. 14 years later, we finally get to move. And, uh, uh, we moved, uh, you know, into a, a, a bigger house. We were in the city. We moved out in the county. So that's where we live now. And the same applies to employment and friends or any decision that we make in life. For example, with my job here, I had the plan of being there for two years. Thirteen years later, I'm still carrying this flag and <laughs> doing what we can. And I asked myself, often, you know, why am I still here? You know, I made a little joke earlier that I don't have any, you know, retirement through my employer. Um, I'm looking at opening up my own IRA account or something like that now. And I often think back and I look at, you know, why do I still do this? Um, you know, some major benefits are there. Then I get to thinking it's a good cause. We have one, one planet, one environment, if we don't take care of it, that's it. We ain't getting another one. And all I ask people to do is whether I'm speaking like this or at a school doing a presentation or talking to some folks at a cleanup event, I don't want you to be an environmental fanatic. All I want you to do is be responsible for your own trash, for your own recycling. If everybody, starting small in our city and county, would just do that, there wouldn't be any trash on the side of the road. If everybody in the state would do that, the state of Georgia would be a whole lot cleaner, so on and so forth. All it takes is just a few people trying to set that example, you know, for that word to spread and try to get that habit spread out there. That's one thing that keeps me going. Another thing that keeps me going is uh, a situation that happened at our Make a Difference Day event back in October of 2008. With Make a Difference Day and the Great American Cleanup, those events are kind of centered around neighborhood cleanups where the city and county code enforcement marshals will identify a uh, particular neighborhood in the city or county and they would offer them an amnesty date where they could get rid of any you know trash or anything they had piled up you know in some uh, some areas i've encountered you know there may be an elderly lady or a gentleman that might have a 40 year old pile of junk in their backyard that their spouse accumulated and now that spouse is deceased and you know so on and so forth you know the code enforcement marshals tried would try to identify those residents in need within those target areas back in on that day in 2008 uh, I was working at the uh, the county location everything we do we try to have a to keep everybody happy we have a, a city site and a county site uh, for everything that we do I was out at the, the county location, and it was in a, uh, the target area was a trailer park off of uh, Clyatteville Nankin Road, I think it was. And the uh, code enforcement officer that was uh, working that site with us, he said, Aaron, you know, we've got um, this lady that lives across the street. Her house is technically outside of this target area, but, you know, she's uh, medically disabled. Uh, she's got a nephew that was supposed to have been carrying her trash off for the last year and a half. He hasn't been doing it. And she can't really do for herself. Is there anything we can do for her? I was like, well, you know, we got the volunteers here. We got the manpower. I've got the the trash trailer. We got the roll off. Let's go see what we can do for her. We went across this street, 
and keep in mind a lot of my volunteers come from VSU, so there are sorority uh, ladies in tow. So we'll go across this street, and it's a, uh, an old wood house, wood siding, wood frame, and it has a uh, adjoining carport built onto it um, with the front open, closed on the side and on the back. Probably 15 feet, 12, 15, 12 to 15, 15 feet tall uh, ceiling in it. Probably 20 feet long. This thing was crammed from top to bottom, from front to back. You could not literally step one foot inside this thing because of all the trash and everything. She couldn't, like I said, the nephew was to have been taking her trash off for the last year and a half. She was unable to do so, so the trash just wound up under the, uh, the carport out there. We pulled two and a half tons of trash, litter, and debris out from her in this lady's carport. And I probably saw just about every species of, or of roach and insect that you could think of. One of those wound up in the, the work boot of one of the sorority girls, so there was some screaming going on. But the thing that struck me most and the thing that keeps me going in this job the most is that while we were doing that work, that lady sat on that porch crying her eyes out, calling us angels, asking folks if, she, if she could, she could, could she fix us any food, could she get us anything to drink, did we need to use the bathroom. All she could do was sit there. But she called us, you don't hear thank you a lot in a lot of your jobs. And that was one thank you that I'll never forget. You know, she called us angels, and I think we left a last, lasting impression on that lady. And I know she appreciated it. And that's what keeps...